going on, baby? We got a lot to talk about. It's been a couple of weeks, but uh, we're going to dive into everything here on the Sooner Later Sports Show. I am your host, Jay. Thank you for pulling up here on the YouTube channel and listening wherever podcasts are downloaded and listening to while you're here. Please wipe your feet. Like, subscribe, rate, review. Give us five stars. You don't think we deserve it. Just give us five anyway. And um, gift it. And so I'm bringing in everybody in. Got a lot to talk about today. We got Coop in. We've got PG in. We're going to dive into um, some recruiting updates. We've got uh, some uh, announcements coming up, and I'm pretty excited about those. And uh, practice notes. Everybody's been seeing everything coming out, and I would love to deep dive into a little bit of that stuff. And we're going to have fun. So hit us up. On the Unfair Fan Line, 430-901-1906. And uh, leave us a message. Let us know what you think of the show. Leave a comment. Like, subscribe, rate, review, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, Coop, PG, happy Wednesday, man. We're back. We're Dak. What's going on? How y'all feeling? What's going on? Coop, how, how's it been? You know, it's been a while since we've been able to really get together. At, well, it's not really been a while. It's been, what, a week? Yeah, no, or two. I mean, everything's been every, yeah, everything's, uh, it's been crazy, but yeah, it's, it's, it's go time. Uh, uh, but just, you know, again, the, uh, the, 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 the J O B keeping me, uh, keeping me pretty, pretty intense. And then so, uh, but I, I feel the, uh, the, the, the itch and the fever has been coming back here for a couple of weeks. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, get, get digging in. Yeah. It's not like me, man. That's, um, how I was feeling. I was like, man, I need to get back on the lives, but I mean, the biggest thing is, is, I mean, we can get on here and just talk, you know, everything that's going on in the world and, you know, sports related, but, you know, we're about to get some spring ball. So now we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're in commitment season. This is Oklahoma's commitment type season, right? Between April and July is when we see the biggest bulk of commitments. We didn't, you don't see a lot at the beginning of the year. And luckily coming into this season, into this Recruiting season, we actually had what six or seven commits already coming into 2024 for the 2025 class. So we lucked out that things kind of shaped out into our advantage because everybody was wondering what the heck was going to happen with the rules and everything. There was a lot of uncertainty. Well, now the NCAA announced that, you know, last year that, you know, you're going to still be able to recruit up to 85 kids. I expect the 26 class to be very, very light until April or May of next year, too. So this is the season. We've got a lot of kids to talk about. We've got a lot of stuff to go into. And so, hey, everybody in here. Um, Mikey asked this question about the uh, extensiveness of Everett's injury. And Steven answered it. He uh, He's having surgery today. He had surgery today. And the anticipation is he's done until fall. And we'll dive into him as well. But first. PG, Coop, on recruiting. It's feeling good, man. Um, Trent Wilson appears to have like 8 million crystal balls gone in. So at this point, he said his date to April 10th. I mean, do we doubt that there's – is there a chance for anybody at this point? I'm sure somebody will say Penn State or Texas A&M. Which is funny. Anybody would even think that because, I mean, the Penn State guys are basically saying he's not even going to make the blue and white game, which is the 13th, because his commitment is set on April yep. 10th. The minute he said it to April 10th, I was like, oh, he ain't making another. He ain't making another. Because that was, that was their last visit on his list. Ain't no chance this happening whatsoever. So, Coop, how excited are you about picking up a player like Trent, William, Trent Wilson? Trenton Wilson. I mean, when you – when we saw the writing on the wall, you know, uh, with rink, I, I think that we are all trying to convince ourselves that, um, that, you know, if he was going to not be a legacy, he was going to come here. Right. And so, um, A&M, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, like I, I said it kind of with, uh, some choice words that I won't use in here, but, uh, to all you guys, when we were in a chat, uh, you know, the other day when we were talking about it and it's just, it's frustrating because it's, it, you know, I don't understand how you can see the same thing in A&M for year after year after year. And somehow they still weasel their way in. But uh, I mean, I guess that there's a new chance for hope. Um, you know, if you can get, if you can get, you know, a great actual culture there um, with the money that's tossed around, I mean, that that's a little scary, but um, you know, with, 
with, uh, with, with, with the big man, um, you know, when you start having people who, you know, we don't see crystal balls from very often start dropping, you know, stuff from Maryland that he's coming to Oklahoma that, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much the writing on the wall. Maryland. That's, that's always the beauty of it. PG, when you saw that, I know you got excited. Yeah. You know, my immediately, th- my immediate thought was, so we just need to lose a five-star offensive lineman somewhere so we can dedicate their money to another one, right? Like, do the same thing. Like, we just need to move, like, we just need to let one of those happen so that we, we can go all in on another dude. Is that what we need to do at this point? So, uh, no, Trent Wilson's going to be great. Uh, I've talked to him a couple times. He's a great dude. So I'm excited for him uh, to make his commitment and potentially be a part of this class. I think I did the uh, class rankings earlier with 247 Sports. Um, if you land him and Malik Hawkins, you're number five. Uh, there's obviously a pretty big gap between five and four. So, uh, but Malik Hawkins, I would expect would be a four star by the end of the cycle. So, um, I was actually looking through it earlier. Uh, there's a good chance Oklahoma doesn't have a single three star in this class by the end of the cycle. That's exciting. That, that That's is exciting. I, it's kind of funny to even see that because I mean, what he's what is Hawkins right now? He's not even ranked at. It, not oh, ranked with two four seven, right? He's a three. But he's with, ranked. He, he's a three star with on three, and he's a four star with rivals. Yeah, I saw that. And yeah. so their comp- consensus has him listed as a four star, at um, but and it kind of feels like with him, people just kind of like assume they know where he's going. Mm-hmm. After Michael decided to come it's, to Oklahoma, in which he's been showing out, it's like they just everybody quit. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking at, um, <laughs> I mean, if you're looking at the Eli Bowen, you know, it went dead silent for a while, and every, you know, there was like, it was so quiet that there was the capability of a whisper that it might be somebody different, but I mean, it, it was, I mean, we we knew, right? And so, um, but I I tell you this is if Malik Hawkins, it, he looks like an absolute stud, and I got to say this is, I mean. If if Michael has improved, I mean, because I'll talk about this at some point, but if Michael has improved as much as he has since Allen played uh, Denton Geyer, uh, you know, two years ago. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, I mean, the, the, if Malik improves like that and he's got the pedigree and he's got the coaching and he's got the influence around him, then, I mean, the guy's going to be, yeah, he's going to be a pretty decent four-star. Oh, no, 100%. And... Michael has been showing out in practice. So, yeah. I'm kind of curious to how that's going to look. Because I don't like that take. I talked about it last night. I don't like that. Fair point. Fair point. But uh, as Steven asked the question, is it too soon to thank Rink? It is right now. Let's get that official commitment and then see him. Once he goes official, then I could say we could do the thank you. But, I mean, Landon would have been a nice haul, but I, I'm really liking I'm really liking Trenton. You add Trent Wilson. Me too. Then you can add Cole up there in uh, in uh, New Jersey, which I really like the idea of him. He, uh, you know, Cole yeah. with the kid, he's super tough, and he's shown his toughness in a lot of capacities. So I think I would be interested in having him join the class. Um, and then, of course, Mike, uh, you know, Malik Hawkins – Everything about him at his size feels like he should be rated a lot higher, right? And watching him do some stuff at Frisco. Now, I've watched his film, and it just – he's – he more so just doesn't get much thrown his direction because people don't want to fool with him because they're not stupid. But at the same time, we just need him to um, – we, we need him to start camping. Once he starts camping and really showing off his talent, people will – have to rate them higher, but at the same time, honestly, don't see him really camping much. Like, why? Like, why would you go really do much mini camps? You really have no reason to at this point, unless you, you don't want to be the one to have a higher class one. that's not ranked. I mean, that's why I don't think that really means much. <laughs> he does not want I mean, to be that one guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair, I mean, but does that really matter though in the long run of his his ability to play? The I, game? I, I mean, Smitty might make it matter. Fair. You might Fair. say you ruined it. I don't, I don't think Schmitty cares about uh, rankings. <laughs> he cares about them guys that can play. But um, Steven is asked a good question here with Floyd uh, Bucard. It looks like he he hasn't been to Oklahoma, but I just saw an article just literally went up on uh, Rivals. It hit my Twitter. And 
it appears he has a really, really, really good relationship with Bates. Mm-hmm. And like, he's trying to figure out how to get here. And PG, I think you've talked to yeah. either him or people around him. I'm assuming that that's, that's, that's something that's actually viable. Yeah. Uh, Floyd Bucard is in a good spot with Oklahoma. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to get Trent Wilson. I don't think it's a secret. You're getting Cole Bryler. He's never been to Stanford. So I don't know why they were in the top three. He's been to Ohio state once. Like, you're pretty much landing. So you get those three defensive linemen between Kamori Moore, Trent Wilson, C- Cole Bryler. At this point, it's like, all right, we're not going to push hard, but, you know, we'll if they come, they'll come. And I think that's going to be Floyd Bucard. And, guys, the Landon Rink sweepstakes aren't over. If he shows back up to campus, it ain't over. And, I, and I'm telling you, he said the not ain't happening. <laughs> There's a chance. I don't believe his tweet of I'm only going to do my visits with A&M. I just don't believe it. So, I mean, there's a chance you could end up with four guys in this, four defensive linemen in this class. But I think once they get Cole, I think they're not going to just, they're, they're not going hard. No, I get you there. I totally understand that. Besides, so as we look towards the end, yeah. um, there was another uh, Jay, person that say, put out their dates. Go ahead, Coop. I, I was going to say, and also, don't sleep on Kamari uh, making a little bit of a rise this year, too, because, uh, I mean, the guy was a defensive MVP in, in the ranks last year. And, you know, as we were doing our interview, I think dude was 16 years old. Like, and that's something that, like, we just forgot about. Like, is, is I mean, obviously, like, this class, a lot of these kids are still, like, 16, 17, 18 years old. And so, I mean, he is going to continue to grow. And um, if you're worried about his uh, his old friend, uh, you know, who went across the street. I don't think that's the, I don't think it's an issue. Um, I really don't um, because I, I don't think that Missouri has made him a priority like that, but um, you know, Kamori is going to rise too. Has Missouri even offered Kamori? I don't think, they, I don't think they offered him. I can tell you. I will say this though. We can't take too many defensive linemen because you have to leave a spot for a certain five-star defensive lineman in a different cycle in case he hits the portal. Get that. <laughs> Get the F out of here. Are you two doing that again? We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that today. Hey, I'm just saying it could be this offseason. that things go right, it could be this offseason. This could I'm be done. the year. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with you. I'm just going to say I'm done with you on this. Uh, no. We're not, we're, we're, that, thank you for not even saying a name because that will not. No, oh, I'm not, we will not, we will I, not. I, I didn't even say what cycle. I just said from a previous cycle. I could be talking about two or three. I, I don't, it don't matter. Just, yeah, we, we good. We're done. We're done <laughs> with that one that doesn't exist. So, uh, thank y'all for pulling up. Hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe. I see we got a lot of people in here joining from the, uh, uh, not, you know, because if I'm correct, OU Insider is going on at the same time under the visors happening, which is kind of funny that we're doing this at the exact um, same time. And, um, but no, appreciate y'all pulling up. Coop keeps coming in and out, you know. Everything on his side is acting fun oh and good. God. But, Ollie Gordon. oh God, who's, who says about Ollie Garden again? Somebody, dude, this is the third, this isn't the same person. April this is Fools. the third person within an hour that has said something about it. Yeah, I've even heard about him to Oklahoma on a couple of occasions. I'm just like, look, until I physically see him on this campus, there's nothing about him that I would ever, ever actually believe we don't is need uh, him. real. We don't need him. No, we really don't. I and mean, we're good. Honestly, I, I, our top three running backs are probably better than Ollie Gordon anyways. I mean, is that a hot take? <sighs> I mean, I, Debatable, but I mean, the dude was probably one of the Production. nation's top running backs. So, but but Coop agrees. I I say debatable, but I digress on that. Hit the like button if you to the channel. Subscribe. Share also why because sharing is caring. We are like sixty away from fourteen k. We'd love to hit that number. So make sure y'all tell your friends, your people, and everything. So just keep laughing about this. I think it's the funniest thing in the world. But I want to talk practice. About to talk about practice, y'all. We're going to talk practice. Why do I want to talk practice? Because practice, baby. It, it has been uh, good. We've been hearing nothing but good reports. 
Uh, I've been hearing from some folks on both sides of the ball. I know a parent on the offense or a parent on the defense shoot me some info about how people are performing. And Brent Venables had a presser on last night, seventh practice for the spring. And first off, shout out to him, the staff, everybody there. They given some unprecedented access, man. This is like the coolest stuff in the world, man. You're getting all kinds of interviews from the beat. So you're actually getting to hear from the players and how they're feeling and how they're doing. We didn't get that before, right? This is like the, the most access and opportunities that we've ever seen. And so now us as fans are truly in tune to what's going down. That's pretty flipping exciting, right? We, you don't get this very often. And so we need to thank Brent Venables for that. But what I want to jump into here is... um. Troy Everett, you know, hurt. He's done until fall. He's like the only real injury outside of Justin Harrington still recovering from his knee and Andrew Anthony recovering from his. For the most part, we sound like we're kind of healthy, right? Javante Barnes is healthy and he's moving around well. I mean, Caden Helm sounds like he's got just a little hammy thing, but he's expected to be out there next week. Guys, give me a player on both sides of the ball that you're excited to hear more about over the next set of spring practices next week. Coop, I'll start with you, and then PG, you follow up, and I'll wrap us up on that. I think I'm becoming a hardy boy. Ooh. I mean, it's, what have I continually uh, said about our defensive backfield? Nowadays, you got to be a dude to come in and to play. Yeah. And yeah, I could go with the reports that Okoye is a freak and he may show up as a specialist. I, you know, Jackson, Stone, all that stuff. Hardy's one that I try to continually tell myself to stay, stay locked in, like don't give up on him, you know. But I got so enamored with that class. There's so many good people over the past two years. But yeah, I, you know, I, I will say uh, Hardy and then uh, our Crimson Missile, brother. Our Crimson Missile is gaining some steam, and people are starting to take take notice. And so I'm going to have to pull that uh, that tweet back from before he even signed. And, you know, when I called it out, and I, uh, you know, I put it out there. So, uh, but, yeah, I mean, Hardy, and it, it, those, I mean, that's that's got to be it. But hearing Lou get out there and uh, get out and, you know, rocking some people, I believe that Gabe and Teddy said um, he's one of those people who is not afraid of contact or he – you know, he has an appetite for contact, but it's it's like every time someone gets up after they get hit by Carter, it, it, it is a, you know, it's not like... Uh, arms you know, a little limp. <laughs> yeah, the arms just hanging limp, and you're like, ooh, that wasn't fun. So, yeah, those uh, that's that's got to be it. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I, I can't wait to see this Lewis Carter, uh, this, this arc of him. PG, what you thinking? It's just any player, right? Not not new players. Because I'm really liking Devon Sears. From what you're hearing about Devon Sears, and yeah. I did a little bit of research. Did you guys know he was our highest-rated pass rusher last year? And he only played 11 snaps, in fairness. But in the 11 snaps that he was on the field, he got to the quarterback in five times in terms of a rush. So... If what Burn Venables is saying is true about Devon Sears and the step up and the glow up that he's had in one year, this defensive line, as I was telling you earlier, you go out and get yourself a bleeding. This defensive line next year is going to be absolutely solid. So, like in Devon Sears, and then on the defensive side of the ball, I agree. I'm liking Lewis Carter. I mean, he's the strong. Didn't they say he was the strongest person on the team last year? Easily, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said that he like, you know, I think it was a mechanic that said that he he definitely asked for weights for his birthday when he was like five. And so like all he does is eat weights nonstop. Yeah, the dude's a beast. I would assume Lewis room. Carter is gonna be able to bench more than old uh, that Texas player, right? Oh, oh yeah. He's probably <laughs> tossing two and a quarter up fifteen to twenty times at his size today. Actually, I believe there's a video of Lewis Carter doing that. Right now, I'm going to search yeah. the Twitter bird and see if there is. And then Stephen mentions it in the chat 
this is somebody that we haven't really talked about a whole lot on defense. Taylor Heim. He's yeah. been getting a lot, a lot of hype over the last yeah. over the last couple, over the last couple of practices. It's been BV is mentioned, and I think he's gotten up in he now he hasn't gotten up in size yet. His biggest problem is he hasn't gotten bigger. Right. And so for me, and, and Lemon's right here spot on, Bauer Sharp, man, we're gonna have a tight end room that's gonna be stupid good. Because it's not only that Bauer Sharp is good. We've also got uh, Hampton Fay. I heard, is actually stepping up. He's the other former quarterback. He played at Michigan State, transitioned to tight end, and he's also um, – he's, uh, what, three – what is he, 250-something pounds at his height? So he's not, he's not a slouch. Like, he's just as sizey as um, the others. And so – Man, if you get if you get a um you get Bauer Sharp, you get Hampton, you got Devon Mitchell, who basically BV said that he's just got to refine his game and he's good. Yeah, and remember, Devon Mitchell is supposed to be like a senior right now. Like yeah. he's actually technically in his junior year of high school, and he's already bigger than most of your. He he's already he's six three two fifty as well two fifty five actually I think that's what they had him listed. Tight end room is going to be dumb. I'm excited to see what they turn out to be. And then we haven't even talked about Jake Roberts. Can you talk about him because you know he's been hurt, but he's coming back. K McIntyre looks pretty good in some of the one on ones. Uh, Helm when he gets healthy, he's going to be soft. Tight end room. Josh Fanuel. We've actually got a tight end room that I feel like has got some some that's going to be able to contribute very well this year. So offensively. Defensively, well, she, though, we're talking about offensive guys. Yeah, who you got offensively? No, I said if we're talking offensive guys, I mean, I have been blown away with what we've been hearing about Heath Ozida and that offensive line. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Heath has been on it on the offensive line. He's- I don't, I don't think like he's got to be one of the most improved players this year on this team. Him and Sears Got probably are your yeah. offense and defensive guy. And Sears. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say him and Sears will probably be your two. Because he's the one that's talked about the most. So that's a that's a yeah, that's a good one. I would. I mean, it's it's it's. I'm gonna buy into it, but it's uh, it's you know, I want to see what Caleb Hicks is. Um, you know, every single report is the guy looks like a freaking Terminator. He looks like if you're going to create a uh, a running back in a lab, it would look like Caleb Hicks. Um, I think he's big. He's strong. Um, I, I think that he probably can run the ball. Um, you know, he's got top end. I mean, he's got everything that you could potentially do. It is the mental side of it, right? Because DeMarco's not going to put you in there. If you've got ball security issues or you get – a situation to where you're tossing out, uh, you know, a, a kid who's, you know, going to have to be an extra, uh, you know, I guess a thing for Jackson Arnold to worry about, you know, maybe that doesn't happen, but I'd like to see what happens because um, let's be honest, we've got, and before Tatum shows up, we've got more running backs than we got carries already that we all want to mm-hmm. see. So um, Hicks, Hicks is supposed to be that spring just, absolute star unless Megua can get out there and do something in the spring. Which, I mean, Caleb Hicks, we've all seen the pictures. But this is like the fifth or sixth person now that's talked about Ollie Gordon, Oklahoma. Guys, I mean, I get it. Brian Clinton over at Heartland Sports wrote an article about it. But I want you, we, I want you to use your brains here for a second. We're all really hyped about Caleb Hicks. You've got Javante Barnes, Gavin Sawchuk, Taylor Tatum, Xavier Robinson, Emeka Megwa, which is a guy that we saw later in the season uh, for like a couple, or, or was it one game or two games that he actually got a chance to play in? Did he play? I, he I don't played think he la- ever played. He played last year. I texted Jay because I was excited because Jay always talks about this guy. My point is the running back room is way too deep. It doesn't make sense for Ali to come here, so I think we need to put that to rest. Uh, I mean, if you're just, if you're trolling O state fans, like let's, let's move on. Um, you know, uh, she was good to us while she, uh, well, 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 that was what we were, but, uh, we've moved on to bigger and better things. So 
don't troll Oklahoma State fans anymore. Go find <laughs> go find a nice LSU fan to to troll. At least they know how to fight back. I can't believe Brian Clinton actually would do that to everybody like that. That's just <laughs> hilarious. I have not read the article. I'm just I'm looking just at it by, now. Just by it's skimming funny. it, it looks like he was kind of alluding to Josh Pate's comments about the portal being wild and maybe alluding to hey like ollie gordon oklahoma would be i I, just from looking at it that's what it looks like i I haven't actually read it though yeah that's just um that's just dumb but anywho um i do want to talk about this and steven thank you for bringing this up because this is actually the next thing i was about to pull up is these one-on-ones that we were seeing with um the um the 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 wide receivers linebackers tight ends and everything Like, right here, here's your J.J. Hester one-handed catch Mm -hmm. in the back of the end zone. Like, they were out there battling. And there's, like, a good a minute and some change. There's You got got Gibson out there getting his in. Everybody was looking good. And what's funny is that Kip Lewis looked solid. If there's some stock to pick up on the defensive side, get some Kip Lewis stock. There's your Bauer, big Bauer, and he's battling Hardy. Which is, of course, they're, they're, they were duking it. Like, this was not even a game. We got uh, Farouk going Farouk for it. And, and, of course, remember, this drill is really beneficial. Woo, Vaughn. Is that Devon Mitchell? Oh, my God. No, that was Faneuil. Okay. No, that's Faneuil. Yeah, that was, that was Josh Faneuil. Yeah, Faneuil and, of course, wide open Petaway. Uh, uh, yeah, Devon Mitchell's 84. 84. Yeah, but you got uh, – this, 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 this entire – Drill is very favorable to the wide receiver because the wide receiver know what they're going to do. Their job is just to get open. And then the defender's supposed to figure it out. Look at that Kip Lewis knocked down. Good Lord. Him in in, in space? Jeez. And, he's and already he, shut me he, up. Kip Lewis, you can already see that he's already put a, you know, a few LBs on because, uh, you know, I, Bauer. I shouldn't have bigger. Yeah. Bauer is, listen, I, if the guy can block at all, uh, what's up, Reggie Sr.? That's a big dude. Uh, yeah, so or Reggie two, Reggie two, back in, but uh, I Reggie mean, Junior, you, yeah, yeah. You've got, I, I mean, listen, Texas is back. Winter is coming. Caden Helms is back up. You know, or he's healthy or coming back. Like I, I I'm, I gotta see it. Uh, I'm gonna have to see it before. But uh, you know, Fanuel has not disappointed much. Um, it sounds like Bauer Sharp's probably going to be lining up number one, and it sounds like uh, Jackson Arnold has some decent rapport with him. And uh, if you need a super athletic 6'5 target, that's a pretty good friend to have, if, if, if I do say so myself. PG? What was that? Oh, I'm ready to see me some Zion Kearney. I'm ready to see some. <laughs> yep. I mean, I love that y'all saying that on these one-on-ones, though. I'm trying to see some carry-on. Give me some oh, yeah. Give me so some I giants. I realize we could have a wide receiver lineup of our tallest wide receivers and Jaden Gibson, J.J. Hester, Ivan carry Who's stopping that? Like, please give me a team that is stopping that. Because you might yeah. have one or two tall DBs, but do you got four or five? Because you could even run carry on at the tight end position as a flex tight end and do Guys, Nick I, Anderson, JJ Hester, like I told you. I told you. They were giving carry on the same speech they were giving Mark Andrews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a wide receiver. Every once in a while we're gonna have you line up on the inside of the slot, like a little bit closer to the offensive line. And then maybe once in a while put your hand down on the ground. But yeah, you're a wide receiver. Just yeah, just, that's what we're doing. So all you gotta do is just yeah, show I mean, the Mark Andrews film and be like, listen, it, he's a tight end and a wide receiver. He's the same. <laughs> yeah. But you also have like, and don't forget, you've got a Jaquez Petaway or a or a Teon Burks who I mean, like, again, so I can't remember who exactly it was, but somebody made a comment from the area and it said Dion Burks at Oklahoma will will become a first round draft pick. Um, I did see that people are, are, people are already starting to go. He's like, we gotta, we have to curate the offense around him a little bit around his skill set, And, uh, you know, he's running at the slot. And so, you know, you may not see, uh, you know, I think a lot of people were wanting Farouk to the slot, but I mean, if you toss out there, you know, at a maximum time with Andrew Anthony healthy, You've got Andrew Anthony. You've got Jaden Gibson. You've got uh, you've got Nick Six. You've got Bauer Sharp. Uh, I mean that right there. 
there. Is there, is there anybody that you're not super comfortable with at that point? Um, so yeah, it's, I Good mean, we, we, the offensive firepower is, uh, but, uh, y- there's just one thing you need to do, be able to throw the ball and, uh, we'll talk, my... talk about that soon. So I have a question oh, about yeah. Petaway because we talked about this last night on Jason's stream. And I said, at what point do we see a guy like Petaway hit the portal? And I'm not saying it's going to be Petaway, but like you have Brennan Thompson, who I would assume is probably the leader in the role of like, Hey, we just need you to run deep once or twice mm-hmm. a game and we're going to get you the ball. And I feel like that's kind of Petaway's game as well. And then you're like in the slot, and it's like, okay, so you got Farouk and Burtz who can also do that. So, like, where does Petaway fit in the rotation this year? Like, what kind of wide receiver is he on this team right now? Because I feel like he's really good, but there's probably at least two guys above him in the slot and Brennan Thompson ahead of him in terms of just, hey, just run. And then when Andre Anthony comes back, that's going to be two guys ahead of him. I mean, technically, to me, I see Petaway as more of an outside guy than a slot guy. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing your slot dudes are probably going to be Burks, Brennan, and then Farouk, most likely, right? Your outside is going to be Nick Anderson and Gibson for the most part. Uh, Andrew Anthony, depending on his back, should be back. It'd be, what, 11 months from his surgery once the season starts. There's potential he'll be ready to play. There's potential that he may not be. It all depends on how he heals. But right now I'm not seeing him in a knee brace when he's walking around practice. So that's a good, that that's, that's a good indication, but I'd say Petaway is probably going to see some action. Cause I think we're going to run a lot of four wide setups, right? And if you run a lot of four wide setups, you're going to have opportunity to play a lot of different people. Now, there, I, honestly, if there's anybody out there that I believe is going to force their way on the field, it's going to be carry on. Cause if you imagine having carry on, uh, Nick, Nick Anderson and Gibson. and Gibson out there. I mean, that's six four, six five, six with six. Bauer Sharp. With Bauer Sharp at tight end, that's stupid. But that's my point. right. I feel like you're going to want your tall guys outside, and you're going to want your small guys inside. Yeah, yeah. You want the ones that can maneuver well, have be agile. But I think Pettaway could be on the outside, just outrun the defense. Now, granted, the good thing I didn't even mention him, and Reagan is another guy that is in Petaway's class. And again, right. I like Petaway. I'm just like, man, this feels like it's, um, it's tough. The good thing, yeah, the good thing for Petaway is, is that he's still young and he's probably going to be used more next season. Because at that point, Farouk's gone. Burt should be gone. Um, so to be him and him and Brendan Thompson, Anthony, just depending on how he develops. Anthony would... And I think Anthony would be back uh, depending on how he plays this year. I think he has one more year left after this year. I think he came here with three years of eligibility. Um, Jay, but you'll have Nick it, Six, Gibson, Petaway, and Petaway, Brennan, and then Kearney. Andrew Anthony. And then you start going with the younger players. I don't expect to see a lot of the young dudes actually play, though. That's the thing. And a lot of them are willing to earn their stripes and get better in their route running. As long if they're they're the best, we're gonna play the best receiver at the time. That's the one thing I can tell you that yeah. Emmett Jones has shown. He's gonna play the best guy. Well, I'm wondering if and, we see Petaway a lot on special teams in terms of like. Oh, oh I think so too. I think yeah. make him the return man. Call it a day. Hell yeah. And, and and so I mean, if you remember seeing pictures that Caden Durham was posting out last year, like they were they were all running you know track against each other, and Petaway was up there. So Petaway has he's not Brennan Thompson and Deion Burks, but I mean he is. He is a half a sliver back behind them. And if you remember at the end of the last year, uh, Neo said it dead on is, you know, you run motion. They ran a lot of plays for Petaway to where they had him running away from the quarterback and catching something on the move. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you're going to put him in motion and have him running, um, you know, try to get him, you know, the ball in space. He's, he's already starting to lead some of the, uh, the team workouts. So I think that developing a little bit more of a voice for leadership, that's, that's a pretty, you know, it's pretty cool thing to hear, but then guys, we're also not going to be running hurry up like we've done the past couple of years. So you've got oh, more fair. opportunities to swap in receivers. So I think we'll see more of that this year than we did because, we're not going to do a three and out eleven point five seconds, or you know, try to go score in thirty seven. So it, it, you know, we'll, we'll see more players play. That's a good point. That's a very good point. And so the bomb asked this question earlier. I had to make sure I get back to it. Kicker, kickers. BV talked about that. We're good in his eyes right now. 
Now, granted, I'm going to say this. I'm going to place this disclaimer on there, and this is no shade to anybody there. But until we see it in game, don't mean nothing. Because a lot of these kickers do very well in the controlled environment, climate, and kick deep passes against themselves mentally. It's gonna we're gonna have to see what they look like when the in the game, and we actually need them to make a kick. So <laughs> BV said yes. But at the same time, I'm just going to wait until... But I heard Liam is actually booting some 56-yarders and stuff. I think I saw a video on that on Twitter. I was trying to find it a minute ago, and I couldn't. But I know I, there was one in there. So what do we and do Kilmer. when BV rolls out Zach Schmidt? Do we riot? No. I mean, if Schmidt's making them... Hey, listen. You come out and put... You, you got one job. One job. And it is find the two yellow sticks, kick it right between the two. That is it. Like that, that is your job. And so um, it, it just, I, I want to see in year three, like, are we still throwing out the same situations and are we not correcting stuff? And I just don't think you should bring in, you know, a couple different kickers than Gavin Marshall's transferring out. I just don't think you do that with the, with the, you know, the, the full on, like, let's just keep the incumbent and see if anybody else wants to take the job from him. I do believe it's wide open, and I do believe that we're seeing guys hit, hit field goals. And, uh, I mean, you've got the non-conference to, you know, to get it worked out. So, I don't know. Maybe we see uh, BV, you know, running some, you know, three straight dives inside the 35 just to see what our field goal kicker looks like. It's true. Now, there's one thing to also consider, too, is um, let's, let's – let me just transition that, actually. Uh, thank you all pulling up. Hit the like button. New to the channel. Subscribe. Um Help us get over to 14K here. Help us get to 1,000 on the recruiting on the recruiting channel. Appreciate our love and support you always bring in. Let's talk about that D-line, though. Let's talk about it. So BV talked about in uh, the presser in one of the videos I just dropped. If you have watched it, go ahead and watch that. More details there, but at the same time, let's talk about it here. We got two dudes pushing close to that 300 mark. Sears as well as uh, G-Baby, Grayson Halton. Sounds like BV is over here is, uh, trying to up the stock on Grayson and has a high expectation of the kid to have a breakout year. Got to ask the question, do you think this propaganda is properly placed? Or do you feel like um, G-Baby still needs some work? PG, let's start with you. I think it's properly placed. Uh, you look at Grayson Halton. Uh, he played 91 snaps last year. Again, pretty small sample size compared to a couple of your starters where Co and DeJon Terry are played over 300, and then Kelly and Laulu were over 275, and Lacey also played three. He played 385 snaps last year. Uh, so he played 91, and he, had a, he was graded out at 76.2, which was number four on our squad. So in terms of guys that are returning, he is number three, Technically, number two, if you take Sears out of that, because Sears only played 11 snaps last year. I believe it. Uh, it's just a matter of Grayson Halton actually being able to stay healthy, right? I believe it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Cool. You know, we talk to recruits and then other guys on the team, like Co. Everybody always brings up G Baby. So, you know, it, I don't believe that it's coaching propaganda necessarily. Um, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that to push people. Uh, I think weight was a big deal with him. Health is a big deal too. You know, best ability is availability. But we made a big deal over the defensive lineman being up over 300 last year. So, uh, you know, we got some cats that we really need to get closer to that. Um, you know, I, I think with DeJon Terry being up and over, he is, you know, he's going. he is who he is. He's going to continue to push that. Halton has to, I mean, he's got to, he's got to, it's time to put up or shut up because he's got two freshmen who's, who don't mind taking every snap away from him that they can. But I think he has that, I has, he has the locker room, he has the charisma, and I think a lot of people really do like Grayson Halton. And, uh, you know, it, but it, it's not about his ability to pass rush. It was about his ability to, to be big enough to take an SEC offensive lineman week after week after week. Um, yeah. because we can't be trotting out there 280 pound defensive tackles because they're going to end up, you know, flying through the uprights more often than our field goal, ki you know, kickers, uh, football. So, um, I want to see some weight added still. Um, you start hearing about guys like champ Sanders too. Um, I think that he is going to have a role. 
Um, I think that he is, you know, getting in the eyes of a lot of people. Um, and uh, it was I, because I think coming out of last year, I don't think anybody really expected him to stick around. He was a portal watch guy, but, um, you know, he's got some good weight and he's starting to, you know, kind of, you know, put some smiles on folks' faces. So I'll go out on a limb and say, hey, D tackle either either side. I don't think that that is an issue for this team this year at all. Yeah, and and even I'm glad you mentioned Champ as well as with uh, Grayson. The biggest things with them is because of their size, you got to make sure that you can handle that week in and week out bruising, which is where that competitive depth is key and critical. You got to be able to have guys and be able to handle that attrition. It's naturally going to happen. You're going up against a conference where just about everybody's running with 300, 300 pounders on the offensive line and the defensive line. I mean, heck, I went through some of the other schools, man. Georgia's got like six. Bama's got like five. Texas has like four. I mean, hell, Vanderbilt has like four or five. It's just you get big dudes there in the SEC, so you got to keep your eyes. You yeah. got to have guys that can handle. Keep your eyes open for guys that you can go pick up. And you got to have guys that can handle, you know, the battle you're going to have underneath. So, but I'll tell you this, man, when it comes to edge, whoops, and all of that, why did my screen just go black? That was weird. That was the weirdest thing in the world. Um, Did I lose everybody? I didn't lose y'all, did no, I? No, I'm just bringing that back. CPG. All right, we CPG. That was my bad. I don't know what happened. Um, my, my deal decided to act really, really weird. But anyway, point taken is you got to be able to, you got to have enough players to be able to swap guys in and out. So anyway, I think defensive line wise, we're going to be good. I don't have any concerns there. Well, um, what did you say? What did you say? Defensive you line wise, words, I don't have any concerns. Do now, you realize the words that just came out of your mouth? Oh, well, that I don't have any concerns. When was the last time we've heard somebody say that? I mean, but it's, it's how we I, felt about the defensive backfield two years ago is, you know, that's the first time we could say like, Good Lord, like, we have a defensive pack field. <laughs> I mean, we said that same thing about the wide receivers last year, right? We walked in yeah, had, with nerves of steel coming in this past season and saying, man, and, uh, I'm worried about uh, the way that this um, this uh, this wide receiver room is going to be, man. We ain't got nobody to step up. And then Nick Six goes out there and gets 10 touchdowns, and Andrew Anthony shows you that he could be an All-American. If he would have stayed healthy, that dude would have had, had 100 catches. Now, to the videos that you were just showing, I don't know if it was included in there, but Grayson Halton and uh, Stoya posted it on Twitter, went up against Eugene Brooks and flat manhandled him, which, yep. if you guys remember, Eugene Brooks did not lose a rep in camp. No, he didn't. He was, he was, <laughs> so, he was destroying five stars at yeah, camp. So I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, so Grayson Halton might be the real deal. Because like, Eugene Brooks is a true freshman, but like he don't play like a true freshman. No, and the most important and, thing is, is just is having the uh, the the strength and the weight to be able to do it. Yeah, and and, and right? you know also Eugene Brooks was one of the first people as soon as Everett went down, he was the first person to put his hand on a football and start practicing at center. So I mean they've already seen enough out of him to to say this is this is pretty decent. So um, I, I promise you this, stars ranking wise. That offensive, this offensive line wasn't super sexy, even though it was, I mean, it's really not a bad offensive line hole, but I think that missing out on some people, but you watch with Akin Kumi, um, you know, with, uh, with Eugene Brooks, uh, with EPL coming in. I mean, guys, there is, this could turn out to be a very, very, very fruitful, um, you know, offensive line hole this past, this past class. And that class is going to be one that's critical when it comes to um, what we what we do going forward. Only thing that sucks is is that the line is young, right? It's a lot of young players, not that many snaps. We didn't return very many snaps. Um, so I mean, Sexton had the most. If they gel and figure it out, and BB mentioned this in his presser as well, he said the bigger the big thing for them is really just getting cohesion. And I actually had a parent hit me up. Yeah. And tell me, hey, what I'm hearing about the line with, you know, having a kid on there and what they're doing, they're taking it upon themselves to meet on a regular basis to try to get that jail down faster, right? They're not doing – they're following, of course, the standard instructions from the coaching staff, but they're taking it upon themselves to do some extra work. That's freaking huge. 
right? That's what you want. Then we'd be like, all right, I know we don't want to be the weakest link in on this team. We want to make sure that we're showing up and showing out for this team. And so what they're doing, they're working out together. They're, they're, I bet that offensive line is one of the stronger rooms on that team come midseason next year. I can see that. I can see them being like a tight-knit group and everything. I agree. I, hey, I, me, I would bet me. you're going to have – your starting offensive line probably consists of Everett, uh, Sexton, Brown, yeah. Fabecchi. I really want to say Ozeda. Heath Ozeda. I really want to it's say Ozeda. Heath Ozeda. It's, it's going to be Ozeda. Yeah, it's going to be Ozeda. Be. So I think honestly, my my setup has always been Sexton is your left tackle, Ozeda is your left guard. Center is going to be either Everett or Bates. Right now, it's Bates. Uh, right is uh Wei Wu, Fabetchi Wei Wu, and then your right tackle is going to be Jake Taylor. And I think and, that you're going to see a combination of Tarkin and Spencer Brown rotating in a lot on the tackles. Just to keep just and 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 by keeping cohesion there, if they all get enough snaps, you'll be able to uh, rotate guys in and out and still feel comfortable. Uh, and then your guards will be a lot of your freshmen to get some run. You'll see some Brooks. You'll see a little bit of Isosa. You may see Sakin Kumi. Uh, but I think Autry jumps in at your third, right behind Spencer Brown there at like probably the right or the left tackle. So yeah, definitely, definitely. So Bishop, what's up, sir? Um, so he, here is, and I'm not going to tell you who this is from, but I promise you, as I read it, you'll probably, uh, you'll probably gig a little bit, but this is from one of our offensive linemen, a newer guy. He says, uh, he says, I enjoyed going up against G baby and stone. I'm not sure who are the toughest is yet. I'm still learning right now. Just making dumb mistakes and overthinking, which is stopping me from being part of the ones. Like if you just hear that and listen to the sentiment behind that, Like they know, they know, like, this is where I listen to technique. This is where I listen to coaching. This is where I make the mistakes and try not to make the same mistake twice. Yep. And, and and so, I mean, I love it. And, uh, yeah, Garen Hatchett also, he has the chance to be, uh, he can play center and, uh, he's still in the boot from his, uh, foot or ankle surgery. Yeah. Um, so he should be, he should be soon. And, uh, you know, as, as long as things that I'm hearing continue to happen, uh, you know, if he's homesick, he might have a friend come hang out with him here in the summer. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's what that, I heard too. That's assuming, what I heard too. Assuming there's no setbacks, I think Everett's going to be your starting center because he will be. He's still going to be able to lift upper body, so he'll be able to keep his Mental body reps. maintained there. And I think just a little he'll be able to do in fall camp. He's probably unless Bates just makes some great ascension. During the spring and the summer, it's going to be. And he's everywhere. got it. And he's got it. I mean, this is the opportunity. I, I, I believe that Gabe said it in the podcast this, uh, today. It, like, it, this, it's all in front of you. If, you, if yeah. you literally can't take this job right now, then the only person that you need to have a conversation with is the man staring back at you. Because, it, I mean, it, it's absolutely, this is him. And he is, I mean, he is a mauler out of Colorado. And, uh, but again, it's, it's, uh, you know, the, the the quarterback center relationship is not as intimate as it used to be because of the shotgun snaps all the time. But you still I mean, you still got to do these things. But, yeah, he is going to, uh, you know, with with Everett is it was a knee that, you know, we heard from some of the players, uh, fans and stuff like that. Um, they are awesome. Um, miss leg day. Golly. Done, done deal. And and with that, I mean, the big confident thing about him is is BV's expecting post. Uh, fall. He said fall camp is when they're expecting him to come back because of his it's procedure be today. Play. Yeah, it'll be, be probably closer to conference play. Now, the good thing is, is that Stephen pointed out here, we still got Hatchet, and as you mentioned, Coop, we're just waiting on him to get healthy. And once he's healthy, and I think he'll be healthy post spring, probably closer to summer, he'll be ready to play in the fall camps. And if he goes into fall camps and does well, be him and Bates. And period. And- I, I promise you this, um, you know, again, I think this happened today too. Gabe said playing center is a lot easier than playing guard. Um, I promise you, we see what EPL is. If we see Eugene Brooks and Isosa looking like this, Akakumi looking like this, EPL could come in here and really put some smiles on folks' face. I still say oh, you yeah. for at least two – 
two offensive linemen in the portal, you absolutely have to do that. That's that's 100% because you can't count on that. But just as how of much of a freak athlete he is, the footwork's going to be there, the mental side of it's going to be there, and if the strength of it, which is the one that I worry about the least, if that comes along and he's ready, I mean, it, it's – you expect to see it. Oh, is that what I think it was? Yeah, a little emergency thing. Yeah, it popped up on my phone, which is weird. Who's but what I'm going to definitely do – Who's the true freshman offensive lineman this year that plays the Caden Green role? Bitches out Brooks. and leaves for another team. I'm going with Brooks. I think it's going to be Brooks that's going to be the one that's going to actually play. Yeah, I'm I think not talking the one, about he, even. I'm talking about somebody that comes in midseason and just like takes a job. I think Brooks. I think it's Brooks. I think Brooks has the best chance to actually play early because he's just that talented. Um. I mean, unfortunately, for that situation to happen, either we ran through a nice string of injuries or somebody on the outside is playing horrendous. So I almost got to say, like, I, I, you know, I, I think I see – I mean, I, I got to agree with Steven there. It's got to be Brooks or EPL. I just, I just believe EPL is so freaking talented. Um, I'm shit, yeah, I mean, it, you see him running some age back. Like, that's – Robbie, you got it. Hey, dog, you know what I think Listen. about Robbie when you say that? I think about if y'all if y'all haven't go watch Vita Vea's high school tape. Yeah, he actually yes. at three hundred yes. something pounds, he played running back in high school, and it's stupid. Like it's not even fair. It should be against the law that other high schoolers had to try to tackle this dude because not only is he that big dude, he's strong, but the dude's very agile, very light footed, and he's actually got some speed. It was not fair, dog. I mean, I would love be, to see that too. We could, we could do a package he played like with Texas attitude. did with, uh, yeah. was it Murphy or Sweat? Yeah, Murphy. They, you know, go line and you. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, they, they 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 tried that to try to uh, muscle us, and you know, that's kind of why we. It worked know, out well. Whooped that ass. So, exactly. It worked uh, yeah, very yeah, can EP, He'll go play inline tight end. <laughs> you know what? I, I I say this, Stephen. If you run him out as an extra tight end on the goal line against Maine or some shit like that, like. That'd be fun. Throw a freaking flat. Throw something in the flat to him. If it looks awful and gets run back for two points, I don't care. I want to see it. I would what love to actually see that. EPL to run at them. I don't think a single <laughs> linebacker in the country would want that. To, want to see that themselves because that is one of those where you just like, oh, that's not. Nice. Is that a, I mean, disrespectful. is that a business? De- is that a business decision? Yes, you absolutely. Just the, you, just, you just look at the coach and be like, I mean. We're freaking Maine. What are we gonna do here? <laughs> like, like, what are we gonna do here? <laughs> now, and I and I've said this a lot, and I and I I really very think, true. I really think Venables should do this. But do you guys think the main game we get through a quarter and a half, and you see a bunch of true freshmen playing in that game? Like, yes, you're pretty much seeing the future of like they're trying to see what they have in their future, and just letting those guys play because it's, I mean, it's pretty much bye week. Just let your starters stay healthy and play all the really, really young guys and see what you got. You'll probably play them most of the, you play play in the first quarter. After the first quarter, you'll probably start rolling in just the young guys and making sure, because I say by first quarter is 28-0. It should be, right? The defense should have at least one touchdown and it should be at least 21 points by the offense and we should be out there just cooking. Now, yeah, yeah, we should be able to go demolish them. It's Like you said, it's a, it's a bye week. So at that point, you're bringing your second stringers, you're bringing your freshmen, and we ain't even got over there to the secondary yet because BV pointed out two freshmen that uh, I was like, okay, I actually brought, pointed out three. He pointed out all three of his freshman safeties. He talked about Powers. And he talked about Howard Reggie Powers playing at Centerville there in Ohio and him playing for a school that – in which – this is good insight for those paying attention to the recruiting world. They go after certain players at certain schools for this particular reason, based upon how they're actually coached. And so BV yeah. talked about how well coached the kids are at Centerville. That's why you they he wanted Reggie. Tampa Catholic's another school that you'll see Oklahoma heavily involved in because he likes the way the kids are coached, right? So there's certain schools to pay attention to that he pays attention to because of their coaching and all of that. That being said, he talked about Boganowski looking solid. They can't wait to get some weight on him and get him going. Oh, Bogo is going to be stupid good. Him powers. Hardy was out there knocking down passes. PV gave him some love. The fact that 
and this is the last thing I'll mention on it. BV made mention of this, and I want to get y'all's thoughts. He talked about how the, I guess you could say the quote unquote problem, I'm paraphrasing them, that we kind of saw last year secondary wise is just we didn't have enough snaps. A lot of young guys actually played. A lot of guys played that had never played at college football level before. So, I mean, you saw Gentry out there, right? Josiah, when he was healthy, he got some run. Uh, besides Woody and Kanai, Kendall Dolby was playing Juco. He didn't play at the D1 level yet. Um, so you had a lot of secondary dudes that never played D1 ball, and so that's where they were figuring things out. Now that we've got that extra year experience, there's no excuse for the secondary to not be the best one in the SEC at least, right? Yeah, I think especially with adding Des Malone, I'm just curious to see how they're going to yes. work Woody Washington into the secondary. Like, so, because I'm, I don't think you take a like he's gonna. I feel like he's got to play a lot of corner. Like, mm -mm. he's gonna be everywhere. And for him, I, he even mentioned this in one of the interviews. They're playing him at safety. They're playing him at a little bit of cheetah. They're moving him around because that's the one thing he wanted to do to up his his draft stock. But at the same time, because of the depth, that gives them the ability to test out new areas. If I'm correct, Ali runs a three safety high sometimes. Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit. So and yeah, so I'm anticipating he's going to run with the safeties occasionally as the as they rotate the younger guys in too. Like if it's a passing down, you're probably going to see a lot more Walt Woody. If you're running three high safeties, I would imagine the look would be you're running three interior guys. You've probably got two traditional linebackers and Desan McCullough in your linebacker core. And then you've got Peyton Bowen, Billy Bowman, and let's say a Woody Washington. And one yep. of those guys is playing the safety that kind of plays in the backfield. And I, so I, I would assume that's how it looks, but then at the same time you can make it to where one of those guys can come up to the line and, Ms., and McCullough could go up to, I mean, step back I, a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that I I would feel like that's what you would do at that point because McCullough can play on the line with the guys. He can play at the linebacker position, and then you've got uh, a Peyton Bowen or I guess Woody Washington who can play in the backfield, but also come up to be the linebacker. I, I think your biggest question the there, your biggest question, yeah, you potentially two cheese. Your biggest question there is going to be around. Um, because this is going to be an obvious passing down, so you're probably not going to have McCullough in the game. Um, you know, you probably would wouldn't have him out there. You'd probably they're playing him probably, at will though. They're, they've been they are him at playing will. him at will. You'd probably have you'd probably still have Canick and Stutzman, and then three safeties. That's your five, three on the line. Hmm. I love Canick, but is he good enough to play over Lewis Carter or Sam Yomasigo or Kip Lewis? As of right now, yes, because he knows the book. Kip, and supposedly he's Kip doing Lewis. good with the book. Now, Kip, Kip, Kip is Lewis a good question. I think Kip will probably Kip be better in one. coverage. Actually, you may see Canick and Kip out there on a passing down, on a guaranteed passing down, because both of them have the speed and probably a little bit better in coverage. So let me... Let me rewind a little bit. Here's a hot take for you. I don't think Woody Washington belongs on the field anymore at Oklahoma. Really? Ooh. I think the talent has surpassed him, and I don't think that him trying to slide all over the place has anything to do with his knowledge of the system and versatility. I I, I personally do not believe that. This is 100% not, you know, not something I've got insider, but I just – I. I've seen Woody Washington fail in famous fashion too often. And I just, I, I believe that if we get into some more cornerback health issues, yeah, that's never anything wrong to have that out there. But, you know, with Robert Spears Jennings, Peyton Bowen, and Billy Bowman, those three guys are your number one, two, and three safety. And he's not taking snaps from one of those cats. I think that, um, you know, with, with guys like, you know, Des Malone, um, you know, uh, um, Kanai Walker, uh, Seatbelt Vickers, uh, you know, Gentry, if that all those people are healthy, I, I bet you see less and less of Woody throughout the year unless we get into like a scary pinch 
And maybe that's better for him because I feel like whenever he had targets in bulk is when he struggled the most. And once he gave up one, it was kind of a, everything broke out. And so, uh, I mean, you can disagree with me all you want, but I think the talent has just surpassed him. Well, and that's kind of what I guess that's kind of the point I was trying to make because I just, I understand what they might try to do at Cheetah, but I don't see him playing over a Harrington or a, um, who's who's the other kid? Kendall Dolby. Dolby. At Cheetah. Like, do we really see him playing over those guys? No. And then at corner, Especially, to me, Dolby it felt won like, award after award last year, you know, on the defensive side, and he only is smarter and probably stronger at this point. So I don't feel like he's going to slide back. Yeah, to me, I feel like Woody's back to mo- mostly be a safety net at corner for if Gentry gets hurt right. again or if Jaden yep. Rowe doesn't look as good. Um, I just I, – I, I agree with you. Like, it, he's 5'11". He gets beat all the time. Like, I, I don't – I don't know where he fits. He doesn't get beat all the time. He's gotten beat on some epic moments, but he ain't getting beat all the time. Like, like at one point, people didn't want to throw to his side of the field out of fear. Then they realized that Gentry was even more of a threat of the interception, and then he started to get attacked again. But he still wasn't giving up a lot. That's the good thing. Now, there were some epic fails. We've had some epic fails by a lot of people, but I totally get what you're saying there, Coop. To me, though, I appreciate the veteran presence and understanding. Hell, those oh, yeah. players praised him. I just... It, yeah. I don't think you see a lot of him, though. I think you see a lot of him in mixed areas, which is probably a better thing for him. He doesn't have to sit on an island anymore. No more island. Gentry's your island guy. He's your he's your uh, he's your boundary guy. Is he the island boy? Yeah, Gentry's the one you're gonna put on an island specifically. Here's on an island. Here's here's why people are cringing and going, "How the hell are you gonna say something out outlandish?" Group is is because it's too. We're too too close to bad defensive back play. And at one point he was a freaking savior. I always do that too, PG. I, like, where's my finger? Yeah, I can't up figure out where, um, but Apache's coming. So Apache's coming. He, he is, I, I mean, he is the last remnant of pre good defense on, you know, on this team. And so um, point. I, I appreciate everything. And you know what? I don't think he gets drafted. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's, you know, I don't know if he's a stellar prospect because I don't know if he has a really like an elite tr- uh, trait. So, what, what is good? You ask him to come back, you slide him some nil money to not go anywhere else, and you say, hey, what are your thoughts about coaching? And you like Billy Bowman right now. Now Billy Bowman's going to the league, but um, but you like Billy Bowman right now have Stutzman coaching the linebackers. You got Billy Bowman coaching the safeties, and you got Woody Washington working with the defensive backs. Like, I, I'm not against it. I just think like let's not force Woody on the field when somebody younger of similar talent is is, is showing out too. Because I guess I'm uh, just trying I don't, to think. No, go, no, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just trying to say like I just I don't understand. I mean, I mean, again, I'm not complaining that Woody came back, but. I don't understand how him coming back increases his draft stock this much if he's going to play all these different positions. No. Because well, he's in the, because so in the long. league versatility, versatility, versatility in the league, they like guys that can be that can be moved from safety to corner. And if he can prove that he can do both, that versatility helps him a lot in his draft evaluation. So that's kind of key. And now this is a good question here, Ro. Dude looks like he's back and healthy. Mm-hmm. He's actually out there moving around. Jaden Ro. No, oh, he's like he's six two and he's a track kid. So you he's fast. Like and he's six two at two hundred and something pounds. Yeah. He's the dude I've dreamed about at corner. I just need him to get it all together and get healthy. Well, because it's all been shoulder. Joking. That's the thing is, it's always been shoulder. It hasn't been legs. You want to know the great thing Shijoke about Roe on Yenna get you. Yes, there you go. Roe being healthy. Is another Tulsa kid this year that looks like they're going to show out? JJ Hester, Jaden Rowe, Gentry Williams. Two twenty. We need to start. We need to start showing these Tulsa kids that hey, not only do we want you, but we can develop you too. 
I and 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 there's another one, Jacoby Johnson. Like Jacoby is 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 going to be pressing for starting cornerback. Also, uh, I think it's Gentry, and then I think you've got you've got Kenai Walker who has looked phenomenal. Um, you've got Eli Bowen who's already turning folks' heads, so he's going to be another one. Um, yeah, you know, uh, J- Josiah Wagner, who if he can get his weight up and just watch the nagging injuries, and then uh, you know, Makari Vickers, I, and then that's and Des Malone. So I mean, you got all these guys. I, you know, it's I mean, funny. You know, somebody that we again, haven't even talked about. Did you haven't even mentioned? Oh, is it the Jeremiah Newcomb? Oh. Oh yeah. We talk about Jeremiah Newcomb either, but he ain't even oh, here yet. And, you know, and, and no, he's not. But listen, Jacoba Johnson at the all under uh, under uh, All American game, he was the best looking prospect I think that we had at that game. You know, two last year, two years ago, whatever. Um, and, and he is he is going to be an absolute stud. Uh, and Reggie Reggie uh, Reggie three, you know, he he is going to be an absolute. Yeah, RG three is gonna be safety. nice. So like yeah, he's a safety. So like yeah. I said this sev- several times, guys, we're going to start seeing names leave this team that are going to go and start on Power 5 teams, competitive Power 5 teams because we are hauling in actual players. Yeah, we're hauling in some so dudes. So we're going to see we're going to see a Jaden Rowe leave or we Don't might see that. a <laughs> you're going to see you're going to see things like this people we want nothing to do with leave because of it oh because God. when you bring in a guy like Reggie Powers Jr he comes in and he's ready to work from the get and i promise you he is trying to take your job every second of the day and then Ollie Gordon's obviously coming to play safety too so. <laughs> it's fucking every 2 seconds and we you know what else we need to talk about we need to talk about Robert Spears Jennings who's out there starting at safety and battling it with Bowen, it's yeah, it's there's. It helps that two of your cornerbacks didn't come in until this until the summer this year. In now this is a fascinating one right him. here. Pachati, Helms, Rowe, Hester are ones that Keaton thinks could hit the portal. Helms isn't going, and Hester are not going. Those two I know for a fact Pich- are not going. to. Pachati's not going. Yeah, Pichotti, I heard Pachati's I mean, he just recovered from his knee surgery, which mm-hmm. he'll be back. I think fall is the expectation for him because he had, he got, it was, I think he had tore something, didn't he? Yeah, he tore his, I think it was his ACL. And I, I think it happened either before the Tulsa game or after the Tulsa game. So, yes, competitive depth, everybody. Yeah. Competitive and, depth. Ollie Gordon. He's the number three on every position. <laughs> and uh, Venables wants Hester to play more. So I don't think he's going to leave. Hester's actually getting some good talk in spring. Uh, yeah, he's making some good catches because he looks imagine, healthy too. I, I would bet Rose sticks it out one more year before he portals. I'll be honest. Um, yeah. I would be surprised if anybody actually, anybody of sub, a non PWO, I'll be surprised if any of them hit the portal this time Did, around. Now, I heard, though, that they fixed their scholarship issues, right? Oh, yeah. We're, we have to worry about that. Because so, it, it, so, it signed so. Up. What's fascinating about the scholarship piece is that we're going to be doing similar to what, you know, the big boys like Alabama and them have done, right? Um, it's, it's, it's a numbers game, right? So what you do is all the guys that are running at the, 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 that are in grad school, you take them off scholarship. You put them on an NIL deal that pays for their graduate school because it's a lot cheaper than undergrad. And you just preserved yourself a scholarship. So we've got enough older players on this list that will probably be NILs without them being actually um, on scholarship. So you're talking you just like don't Ethan know it. Downs or a guy like that. I'm thinking of Ethan Downs. I'm thinking of DJ Terry. I'm thinking Devon Sears. Well, um, because in my opinion, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, and I don't know if they're doing this because this would be the smart. Anybody in state should automatically be a PWO plus because. Their tuition is going to be cheaper than anybody from out of state, anyways. I mean, it's fair. That's a fair point. I, and, I totally and, can see that. But the thing is, is going to pay them plus what they'd be getting if they were on scholarship, anyways. Then being on a PWO plus versus a scholarship, I wouldn't feel like would matter too much outside. Of the just problem you run into with your in-state guys, unless they're like upperclassmen, they have to stay on campus as a freshman. It's like one of those OU rules, and ah, so. Yeah. 
because of that, you may as well just have them on scholarship. It's a lot easier to manipulate that portion of it. But because your upperclassmen are all living off campus, yes, I totally understand that idea. That's not a bad premise at all. But with a lot of your seniors and stuff, hell, Bowman's probably on NIL Plus because they're grad. A grad school is much cheaper than what the undergrads are having to pay. You take advantage of that opportunity and you throw them on that. So I ain't, we've, we, 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 scholarship numbers I'm not concerned about. I'm not worried about scholarship numbers um, at all because I think that they've got that manipulated enough to where we're going to have a lot of people that, yeah, we're good. I just, We're good I on just that have part. a hard time seeing anybody else leave at this point. Like, well, obviously we've heard rumblings, no. and I mean, like, I think Same. I think you're probably your two areas you look at of loss right now is wide receiver and linebacker, and it feels like those rooms are pretty happy. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I I just I I don't think that we see anybody else gone at this point. I think that we're gonna, you know, if anybody leaves, it's going to be somebody who we forgot is on the team, um, you know, is out there, yeah. you know, maybe like a, like a Marcus strong, just because the numbers seem to keep on coming out in front of him and he's pushing him down. Now. Yeah. If, I don't know. If, 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 uh, he's, I've heard some stuff about him. Like, is he not, I, I heard he's making progress, but he's still pushed down the depth chart. That's kind of the he's problem with some of the players. Not, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hopeless. what I'm looking at too. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's hopeless. the question like, is, how much space is he going to be able to make pushing up? Because you got Champ Sanders fighting with him and G-Baby fighting, of course, Jackson and Stone, which they're going to have to play. Like, I forgot who wrote it. Somebody said it basically said they think Jackson is the best defensive tackle we have on the team right now. At if the you notes. look in the chat, if you look in the chat, I have him and uh, Terry as the starting defensive line and tackles. Yeah, yeah. so what, think- you're thinking Grayson Halton, Dejon Terry, and Jaden Jackson? I'm thinking no, Jaden Jackson. I, 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 I think DJ Jane and Jaden Jackson J- and, and and DJ and and Dejon Terry. Well, that's on me. Yeah. Dejon Terry, Halton, and Jaden Jackson. That'll yeah, probably be and your T-Sack. and then Stone. That'll be your rotation. That's well, your if you're wanting to run a three T though, that's what I'm thinking. If you're wanting. To oh, three T. No, three T. You've got uh, your nose is going to be Terry, and then you're probably going to have probably Jackson at a three technique. And then you'll have an edge, which will probably be Ethan Downs, um, on running downs. or even Caden Woolard, because Caden Woolard supposedly, I mean, he's two sixty, and supposedly he's out there wrecking shop too. I, f- I forgot about that kid the other day when we were talking about. And I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. The key thing to keep remember this too is that right now the defense is so dominant in practice. This really looks like what Oklahoma was in the early two thousands, hundred percent straight up. PJ as well. Is um, PJ at weight yet? Uh, he's they're still pushing him. I know that a little bit. They're trying to get him to 265. He's in the 250 range. I think he'll be. I'll think he'll be close. I think he'll be 260 by season start. Problem for him is metabolism. I, yeah, that's 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 going to be it. So we, we that's the issue that in, that we were talking about in in our text the other day is you got guys like Desan McCullough, uh, PJ Adebowale. Um, you know, Jonah Williams, if that comes to fruition, you're starting to get these physical freaks that could play safety rush end or cheetah or linebacker. And it's like, where do we want to put that person? Because the Isaiah Simmons of these world, like that is a difficult thing is it is extremely difficult on if you like, yep. where are you going to be dominant? Because it's a system based deal. So I personally think that PJ, it, he, he's damn near there. And I think that it's a light bulb. Yeah. I, and I think that it's a situation to where he needs to go up and he needs to win early this year to where he starts going, wait a second. I can do this all the time. Like in Happy Gilmore when he's like, you know, maybe I should just try to get it in one shot all the time. And he's like, yeah, maybe you should try that, punk. You know, because like we can't do those simple things like PJ can. And so I think that's it is, is he is going to – He's going to unleash. Now, I think that it's a technique situation still with him. The dude's still learning football. He's- yeah, no, that's 100% fair. That's the funny part. And then, I mean, you, you can even, but you can add to that list too. Taylor Wine out there. He's running around at what? Taylor Wine, uh, yeah. Uh, he's he's Taylor running around Wine at too. 250. He's like 250 something. You know, Heim is out there. Heim's got to put on weight, but he's like at 220, but he's still, I'm hearing good, good reports on him. You yeah. still got a Collier who comes in at 255. Like, 
I think that's what's terrifying about him. You got these freshmen, him and Nigel Smith at 255 walking in as freshmen. Like, and they're fast. And they're, str- man, just, it's, we're going to wrap it up there. Keep y'all excited around the <laughs> defensive line. I told them I was going to try to do 30 because I, I, I was going to get some other stuff done. And we're now an hour and 15 minutes in. There's zero chance I won't be able to get anything else done tonight. So we're going to wrap it up, put a bow on it. Let's put it this way. The defense is looking like a 2000s defense when Brent Venables first got here, kind of like Clemson's type defenses that he started building there. We're looking like that. Only thing we really need, we just need a couple of more 300 pounders, probably 315 to 320, just guys that can eat up doubles yeah, and make it to where everybody else can get their jobs done. I think we're getting to that point now. But at the same time, balls are hurt. It's hard to double Jaden Jackson. <laughs> so that's probably why you're going to see him play. So, all right, PG, let people know where to find you. They should know, but just go ahead and tell them. Yeah, I mean, if y'all don't know where to find me, um, you might be living under a rock. You guys can find me here on the YouTubes at the PG Show. So um, I do a lot more recruiting content. Jay covers a lot of in-season stuff, spring stuff. I'm covering a lot of recruiting stuff. So Yeah, PG, PG1 talks to a lot of the kiddos or whatnot. And, of course, you can see Coop here, here with me on a regular basis. So we appreciate you pulling up. Hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe. And, of course, if you're listening, rate, review, give us five stars. You think we deserve it. Just give us five anyway and gift it. And with that, we will chop it up with all of you. I don't know. Probably on Sunday. I think I'm going to be able to do it remote. I'm working on it and making magic happen. We'll talk soon. Peace.